When you hear the word Bionicle, the idea of speedrunning is likely far behind. It's not that the runs are uninteresting or the story is lackluster, no, as you'll see in this video that is far from the case. Instead, if you choose to dive down this niche rabbit hole, you'll discover a devoted community pouring hours upon hours into understanding just how these games work, and what makes them bend past their breaking point. While this can be seen within multiple games in the franchise, which we'll be covering eventually, there's only one I'd like to focus on today, one very close to the beginning of Bionicle video games. Simply titled Bionicle, this relatively short 8-level adventure has you jumping, gliding, and fighting your way through the world of Mata Nui as seven different heroes called Toa. Each Toa has their own semi-unique ability that helps them stand out from the rest of the cast and make their levels feel more distinct. For example, Gali can dive and swim underwater while Kapoka is able to snowboard. Bionicle the game was released onto multiple platforms, such as the Game Boy Advance, PC, and even GameCube. There are some slight variations between the entries, but the difference is mainly seen between the handheld GBA version and the home console versions. For the sake of today's video, we're going to be focusing on the home console variation. This game is far from perfect, an awful camera, janky physics, and dialogue that makes you wonder if you're having a seizure. You know what news I bring? The drums of Lekoro, cry tell of sons of Makuta, but without my Suva. Dude, he's just saying words. But within this wonderful mess of a game, a group of individuals was formed. A group dedicated to only one goal, beating this game as quickly as they could. Little did they know, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. Before diving into how this game was cracked wide open, it's important that we set a precedence for what runs were like before the huge game-breaking skips were discovered. Back in September of 2015, the very first Bionicle any% percent record with remaining video proof was submitted to the speedrun.com boards. It was just under an hour in length, done by a runner named Cribbon. While solid, there were some very big, glaring mistakes. In the first level, Cribbon died during the ending boss fight, causing him to have to reset. Wow! Why is this fight getting getting me bored right now? This is ridiculous. He lost time due to the random boss patterns in level 2. Nice, this should be a 3 cycle. Come on, let me get him, let me get him, let Prince me get him. Let me get him, let me get him! Come on! Come on, 3 cycle! Come on! Come on! No! And failed a couple of the trickier jumps in level 3. But a deathless 4 and a huge gold in 5 helped bring the run back around, despite him falling off at the very end of the rail grinding segment in level 6. After a level 7 that had to be reset due to once again a very untimely death, I might die. If I die, I also get screwed. I just, so, I just died. Nice. So that's a restart. Now we can of find out what happens. Now we can find out what happens. Cribbin fought the final boss and called his time. As you can see, there wasn't much in the run yet that differentiated it from a fast, casual playthrough. As time would go on, though, that would begin to change. Starting with the game's third level, Gali Nuva. Gali Nuva is Bionicle's titular water level, and it goes against everything that gaming water levels usually are. While Ocarina of Time or Mario 64 are infamous for having slow, sloggy water levels that just seem to drag on and on, Gali Nuva has some of the fastest and snappiest movements out of the entire cast of Toa. You're able to swim at insane speeds by hitting the Y button, jump super high out of the water by double jumping, and even do an attack that kills every single enemy in the final encounter in a single hit. In order to beat the level, you're supposed to run around the map saving these villagers called Matatorin, who then help you open up new areas in turn. For example, after you save 8 of the villagers, they'll use this crane to remove a boulder from your path, and once you save 13, you can hitch a ride on the back of this whale to the final fight of the level. Collectathons aren't normally something you want in your speedrun, and neither are the cutscenes that come along with moving the boulder and riding the whale. The freedom of movement that Gali gives, accompanied by the long nature of the level, incentivize runners to find a way around, well, everything, with the game's first out-of-bounds clip. By jumping into the water between the rocks and the wooden platform, Gali would clip through the rocks and make it behind the boulder, which negates the need to move it at all. 
While you might think this allowed runners to skip saving early villagers as well, for the most part it didn't, since you still need a good amount of villagers from both parts of the level in order to summon the whale at the end. Regardless, the revelation that out-of-bounds movement was possible opened up the floodgates for so much more to be found. All they needed to do was push even further. As far as runners were concerned, Gali was a solved level. There were new pieces of movement tech added in to speed up saving the villagers, but that major skip was just about everything that you could ask for. So, players then shifted their focus over to the more inconsistent levels in the category. Onua is the Toa of the Earth, not to be confused with Pohatsu, the Toa of the Rock, though Onua's level focuses on almost entirely pushing rocks. Did I expect this to make any sense? Anyways, Onua's level is a hard mix between puzzle and combat, with the main theme being pushing rocks on top of pressure plates to open doors. The boss fight of the level also derives from that same mechanic, where pushing rocks on top of all six of these vents will destroy the boss. But there's a slight twist that comes along with that boss. The vents on the floor you're meant to push the rocks over only open at random intervals, adding a good amount of supposed RNG into the run. Or so it was thought. As it turns out, there is a preset pattern to which vents open when, and it's based on a cycle that begins when the room is loaded in. This means that players would need to both load in the room and enter the boss fight at the same time in each run in order for the cycle to remain consistent. This was a tall order, but there was a glimmer of hope. The out-of-bounds clip seen in Gali Nuva wasn't exclusive to just that stage. You were able to clip out-of-bounds in any level as any character, just as long as the terrain lined up. The only other qualification for staying out of bounds was the presence of water within the stage, as it stops you from dipping too far down and being stuck out of bounds permanently. There just so happened to be water in Onua's level, so who says that it can't be done here? After multiple days of theorization, the community was left with more problems than solutions. The boss room for Onua is not on a global timer, and again the event cycle only begins once the room is loaded in. There are hidden flags throughout the level that track where your character is. Every time you pass one of these flags, it tells the game to load the next zone over. These flags don't tend to activate out of bounds, which means runners will have to find an out of bounds clip in the zone that precedes the boss fight, lowering the probability of there being clippable terrain in such a small area to work with. It's not even guaranteed that you could clip out of bounds anywhere in the level, let alone find a clip that fits all of our specifications. As the likelihood dropped lower and lower, the drive to find something anything got higher and higher. But more often than not, it makes you take no damage at all because it, you, it just pushes you out of the way. Anyway, here's nonsense. So you just walk out. And then you float. Go a bit left to hit the loading trigger for the final zone there. It's the green that's where the boss is. I'm just gonna, yeah. This makes even less sense when you think about the fact that this is not how the entire game functions. Not all characters float on the void. It's... I've already done this with two characters. I did it in Gali, actually. It wasn't the swim in air that I did, though I call it the swim in air because you can swim in the air. The runners had gotten more than they bargained for. All they had initially intended to do with this clip was make it to the boss fight sooner and create a consistent cycle they could follow run to run. In the early days of Onua, runners would land themselves in the standard entrance to the boss fight, watch the intro cutscene, and then get to work. This would keep a manageable cycle with a good amount of wiggle room for actually getting the trick. But the more hardcore community members had something else in mind. With the help of memory viewing programs, Hexadecimal would look further and further into how rooms in the game get loaded in, and realize that there's no reason that the boss cutscene needs to be watched at all. And speedrunner Ida would soon after find a way to clip inbounds past the entrance, using one of the pillars that juts out from the water around the arena. This should have been a net positive for runners of Bionicle, if it wasn't for that pesky vent cycle we mentioned earlier. Because of the new entrance point and the fact that you skip the boss's cutscene, in order to maintain an optimal cycle for the fight, runners would only have a margin of error of less than half a second. 
Yeah, half a second of leeway from the second the boss room is loaded in from the moment you enter the arena. Many, many runs have died here, and the game was becoming more challenging than ever before. Obviously, I can't cover every small optimization found in the run. There were other shortcuts, cutscene, and dialogue skips found all across the board, but both Gali and Onua were standout levels that really defined the game. It's worth noting though that the record hadn't dropped a substantial amount for over three years. Not a ton of new tech was being implemented, nor was there much competition. Usually when this happens to a game, the speedrun scene begins to fizzle out, and the boards die down. Bionicle, however, was different. Because after nearly three years of little to no activity, something would be found that was so controversial, it split the any percent board in two. I had mentioned earlier that in order to not lose height out of bounds, a level needed to have water inside of it. This doesn't mean that you can't go out of bounds in dry levels, but it restricts your movement to tangible terrain, no floating into the great beyond like we see in Onua. Because of that restriction, there wasn't a ton of testing done in the waterless levels, but it was clear that the game had reached a point where unless something new was found, the record wouldn't be able to drop a substantial amount, if any, at all. Enter Tahu Skip. Five years ago, on July 16th, runner Idar created a thread on SRC detailing a skip they had found called Tahu Skip. If you wedge Tahu between these rocks and the wall, you can clip into the wall, double jump around the gate you're supposed to unlock, and land back in bounds in the following hallway. What exactly does this skip? Well, it skips a platforming section, a boss fight, and two small cutscenes. Time save that adds up to over 2 minutes. For a game whose world record was around 43 minutes at the time, 2 minutes of time save was ginormous. But there was an issue. Tahu Skip was only doable on the GameCube version of the game, and was more specifically way easier on the PAL version versus the NTSC version. In layman's terms, the NTSC version of a game runs at about 30 frames per second, while PAL runs at 25. This means that PAL is overall slower in a given run because of that frame difference. But the two minutes of time save seen in Bionicle more than make up for that. It's unknown why these five frames make such a difference in getting the clip. But even still, the trick just felt unfair. The community was a buzz trying to find ways to make this simple clip more reliable. They had looked into making save states of the game to see if it's somehow tied to memory, they had tried pausing the game for long periods of time, and even tried creating artificial lag within the game to make the clip more consistent. But nothing. How the clip works is still a mystery to this day, and many top runners avoid doing it due to the RNG involved. Throughout all the experimenting, it was discovered that a version of Tahu Skip was doable on PC, albeit way more difficult keeping the GameCube as the quickest version. But if this clip was possible in every previously viable version of the game, why was it so controversial? Well, forcing runners to play on one specific optimal version of a game is usually frowned upon. It makes accessing the game as a new runner harder, and discourages runners from even giving the game a shot in the first place. With this trick being right in the beginning of the run as well, you could spend 20 to 30 minutes just trying to get one successful attempt, only to lose the run later to even more RNG. It wasn't beginner, intermediate, or expert friendly, but it also wasn't worth banning altogether. After all, it was a valid strategy, no different than Onua or Gali, just harder. It took two years for a final decision to be made, but eventually, the choice was made to split the any percent board into two different categories. Any percent, which is what we've been looking at so far, and any percent no Tahu Skip, commonly abbreviated as NTS. Tahu Skip sent a huge jolt of energy throughout the Bionicle speedrun community, and the game saw more activity than ever before with older record holders like Kalman continuing to grind attempts and new runners like Ander A and Milkblade entering the scene. Milkblade would quickly take over the game, securing world records in any percent, NTS, and even 100% come 2022. This renewed interest in the game was great, as it only incentivized the runners to look for even more crazy tricks. 
but it looked like every level's out-of-bounds time save had already been accounted for. Gali had in the past couple of years gone through major reroutes, gaining new out-of-bounds movements that sped up saving the villagers, and levels that we hadn't talked about, such as Pohantu, didn't have game breaks as much as they had difficult skips. Like the previous so-called hardest trick in the game, where players have to precisely jump between these four axes, with any damage taken leading to an immediate reset. They had the keys to the kingdom, but no way to apply it. There was finally an understanding and level loading, going out of bounds, and so, so much more. Maybe instead of looking for individual applications, players could try combining them into one groundbreaking skip. It's something that was only reserved for the cream of the crop, the top of the top. Freebird. Level 7, or Lua, is by far the best level in the game. It not only has a kick-ass rail grinding segment, but you also gain access to a gliding ability, opening up tons of possibilities. In one section later on in the level, you use that glide to follow behind a giant bird that blows a gust of wind to keep you afloat. It also happened to be one of the only remaining levels without a significant skip. There was one section though that players had been theorizing about a potential skip for a while. The only slow point in the entire level. The bird. When you initially get to the bird, there is a lengthy, and I mean lengthy, text box telling you about the bird and that you need to follow him to reach the next section of the level. Now you can skip the text box by flying straight to the bird and ignoring the wooden platform behind it, but when you reach the end of the flying section, you get soft locked. Remember those level loading flags we talked about in Onua? Well, the flag to load the section after the Gucko Bird, yes, that's its real name, is on that wooden platform right after the dialogue box. So, that's it, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear-cut. You can't skip this super long text box because the load trigger is behind it. There's not much you can do about that, right? Obviously you can, why else would the skip already have a name? Using Hexadecimal's method of accessing debug text within the game, whose method of doing so is absolutely insane, it was found that there was a very, very small piece of ground in the back of the wooden platform that didn't activate the text box trigger. Easy, so all they had to do was jump around the text box, land to load in the next area, and then follow the bird. Well, it's never that easy. Instead of the text box extending to the back of the platform, it extended a little bit further out to the right, so runners would then need to do a super precise glide around that trigger, keep just enough height to activate the bird, and continue on their way. Keep in mind that you aren't allowed to have the debug text pulled up during your runs, so every little bit of positioning has to be done blindly. It is by far the most precise trick in the game, dethroning even Pohatu's axe jump. If you're off by just a few pixels on any of the free bird jumps that you do, you'll either die, sending you back to the previous area, soft lock, or get the text box anyways, rendering all that setup useless. Bionicle isn't a game for the faint of heart, as although the run may be short, it isn't without its challenge. From dedicated single runners back in 2015, to the modern day community built up around this wild experience, it's likely that things will get even crazier as time goes on. The world record in both any% percent and NTS are 3758 and 3937 respectively, a far shot from the near hour long time the game started with. If you'd like to be a part of the future of the game, a link to the Bionicle Speedrun Discord will be down below where you can get information on not just this game, but any Bionicle video game. I'd like to give a special shout out to Milkblade, Hexadecimals, and Footloose for helping me navigate the extensive history of the game, and trust me, there will be more to come.